Hi and welcome back. We're now in week three of looking at uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. The uh, first session we looked at verses 1 to 4, where we recognise that Jesus sends out simple folk like you and I into the mission field, promises to be with us always, and also encourages us to not get distracted along the way and not to take any baggage that is going to hold back the truth of the gospel from reaching those that Jesus is sending us to. Then in verses 5 to 8 in uh, week 2, we looked at uh, Jesus' encouragement to speak peace, to speak shalom onto a house. And if that was to rest there, if those people were receptive and open to the gospel, we are encouraged to eat what is placed before us. So here we are now in week three of this four-week series. And we're going to be looking at verses 9 to 12. So let's read that together now. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it'll be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Jesus is saying two things here. The first one is the reason, the purpose that we are there. The purpose on why he has called us to go into those places. And the second one is a warning. The first thing is to heal the sick of that town. And he says to remind them that the kingdom of God has come near. Over my experience in ministry, I have discovered that one of the things, and there are a number, but one of the things that the church don't particularly do well is in their definition of healing. In late 1989, my mother was diagnosed with bowel cancer. She fought the disease for seven months, and in June of 1990, at the age of 59, she succumbed to the disease and went to glory to be with God. We prayed, and we had a lot of people praying for her for healing. And I remember after mum died, a number of people said to me, but we prayed so earnestly. And she came to know Jesus in that time. And yet Jesus didn't heal her. What's that all about? How can you have faith in something like that? Friends, we can have faith in that because it's our definition of healing. If we were to look at uh, life or existence as a continuum, as we spend time here on earth, and then a time comes in our earthly life where we transfer our existence to be in the arms of the God who created us and calls us home. Then we need to redefine our definition of healing. And this is not a cop out for those who might be uh, returned to earthly good health and those aren't. This is simply a challenge for us to redefine that healing. Mum beat her cancer by going to glory. The cancer cannot hurt her any longer. And she is in a far better place, and she knows that she is because she told us uh, that she had experienced some of it before she went. And so I believe we need to redefine and understand what healing really means. Of course we are sad when somebody is taken from us and there is that separation that is normal and that is human but I believe that we could do well to broaden our understanding of what healing means and the second thing Jesus says is that we are to say that the kingdom of God has come near you you see in the kingdom of God the lame will leap and the blind will see 
and there will be no illness and there will be no sadness and there will be no tears. So within healing that happens, surely that is God keeping his promise of wellness for us. Out of his grace and out of his generosity, his favour. And so the kingdom of God does come near and our bodies are redeemed and are returned to the state that they were originally intended to be in. And we call that wellness. How all that works will be a discussion for another day. But Jesus is saying here that healing is proof that the kingdom of God is near. And then he leaves a very solemn warning. And so the warning that Jesus brings here is as relevant today as it was back then. That we're to use our resources, our time and our passion wisely. If somebody is not willing to listen to the message, then that doesn't alter the validity of the message that we bring. Jesus says here we are also to remind them that even though they didn't accept the good news of Jesus Christ, that message had come near to them. He says that even though you're not willing to receive the healing or you're not willing to uh, receive the opportunity to welcome Jesus into your life does not alter the fact that Jesus was trying to communicate with you. So therefore, there are consequences, aren't there, of all our actions. Consequences to receive and be willing to listen to the good news that is before us. Or to turn away and to walk away and the consequences that come from that. And so finally, I wish to share with you a truth that was given to me by a very good friend and mentor of mine, Trevor Woodfield, over 30 years ago. He said this. He said, Russell, God's purposes will come to pass, and he invites you to be part of that. If you receive and accept and become part of his purpose, then the blessings of God will flow through your life. He said, if you choose not to be part of God's purposes, then his purpose will continue to happen, but the blessing will go to another. You will miss out. The consequences of your actions will be yours, and you must accept them for what they are. I trust that your decision will be to seek God for yourself, that your decision will be to find out as much as you can about the God who loves you so much that he sent his one and only son. I look forward to sharing with you next time the final few verses in this portion of Luke 10 of Jesus sending out the 72 and the results of their mission. May God bless you. May you find him as you seek. And may his favour be upon you and your household this day and forever. Amen.